Hey everybody, uh, we are going to be making this retro postcard today. I believe I've streamlined this as much as possible, so let's get right into it. Uh, things that you'll need. You're going to want to go to our Schoology page and you will find a folder called Retro Postcard. If you don't have access to this, you'll be able to kind of like figure this out and just Google the uh, required things pretty much on your own. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is postcard backgrounds right here. So let's hop into those. In here you'll find a small list that I gathered from just different texture websites um, and whittled it down over the years of backgrounds. When you find one that you like, simply, to, or well, guess I guess, click on the number. It should open in a new tab as long as you're doing this on Safari. And if you like it, leave that tab open for right now. If you don't, you can hit the X, go back into Schoology, grab another random one, and then there you go. So uh, leave that tab open, we'll come right back to that. The next thing you want to do, let's go back to the main page of the Retro Postcard folder, is you're going to want to download this font right here. Cunningham Singleton Italicized .ttf stands for True Type Font. Click on the uh, text there. It will automatically download. You can open up your downloads over there and you'll see it. I'll just hit clear for now. The tab that it opens up in, just close out of that. And we'll get back to that font in about 10 minutes. The last thing that you want to do is you're going to see a folder called Extant Example Photos. For this project, we are going to be making one out of Extant, Pennsylvania, and I have six photos. Let me show you something for yours when you eventually choose what place you're going to want to do. You'll need one photo per letter, but then you'll need an extra photo for the background. So in the case of Extant, five letters plus number six for the background. So I have six right here that you're going to need to download. Click on one, unfortunately one at a time. Um, and then what you can do is with two fingers on a MacBook, click and you're going to look for save image to downloads. And we'll just do this real fast for all of them. Save it to downloads, close out of it, hop to the next one, number two, two finger click, save image to downloads, hop back, and we'll go from three to four, etc. Looks like three I think automatically does it, which is nice. Four, same thing, two finger click, downloads, and I will go ahead and just do five and six. All right, so now if I hop over to my finder right here, the left side of your toolbar, uh, on the left-hand screen or left-hand side of this, you will find downloads. When you go in there, you will see all of your uh, images plus this TTF. Keep that one there for right now. We're still not just ready for it. All right, um, let's go set up our file size. So we're gonna open up Photoshop. I'm gonna go to the home screen of it here real quick. And you're gonna wanna hit new file. Under new file, I will pull up your dimensions. Here they are. Make sure that it's in inches. The width is six, the height is four. Resolution 300, color mode. That can be RGB or CMYK, up to you. Background contents white. Um, go ahead and name this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it postcard video since we're doing a video on it. And then this stuff down here, the advanced options, leave it alone, please. And then you can go ahead and hit create. Should end up with a white rectangle. Let's hop back to our Safari and you want to go to your tab that you have your background chosen in. Click with two fingers and look up the, uh, or find the option that says copy image. Go back into Photoshop and do edit paste or um, command V. It will be pretty small by default. So take the move tool right here, top left tool. With the move tool, as always, my recommendations, no auto select, yes, show transform controls. Transform controls gives you the box. You wanna make this image really big. You want it to almost, you don't want it to touch the sides. You want it to almost touch the sides, get it as big as you possibly can without clipping. When you're there, hit the return key and that will be your uh, postcard. It won't be an exact four by six, but it will be very close. Layer one right here is our background. Uh, so I'm gonna go double click on it and I'm gonna call this postcard texture. I would recommend that you rename your layers. We're gonna have a lot, it can get confusing. All right. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to type Exton. You don't need a font for this because it comes with all Macs. If you're doing it on Windows, you have to find this font online or something that looks like it. 
you're going to want to take the type tool or horizontal type tool over here on the left side of the screen or just hit T. The name of the font will be up here in the top left. Whatever is there, highlight it, delete it, type in H-E-L-V and you should find Helvetica. The specific one that you're looking for though is Helvetica Nue Condensed Black. Select that, that'll change that to Condensed Black. The size, I'd hit the drop down arrow, make it 72 for right now, we will stretch it out later. Um, the that's a, I think that's it for right now. Go ahead and click on this screen. You'll see Lorem Ipsum come up. You're going to want to turn caps lock on for this. Let me be very clear with this. Every letter should be a capital letter. I'm going to go ahead and type E-X-T-O-N for Exton. Now, too small, right? I'm going to take the move tool, uh, the top left tool, and I'm just going to stretch it out a good bit. We are going to put an effect on it, though, in a second, so we'll see. After it's pretty big, to get this effect, though, you've got to go back to the type tool. So reselect the type tool. You don't need to select your font here, but I want you to look at this button where my cursor is moving around. It's like a T with a little curve. Click on that button, and then where it says style in the pop-up window here, uh, currently says none. I want you to click on that, and I want you to change it to rise. With rise, you're looking at bend. Bend is the only thing you need to change. By default, it's 50 change that to 30% and then click OK. Now you can take the move tool once more, reposition your text and stretch it. In my strong opinion for whatever city that you do, you're going to want it to be pretty big, not necessarily touching the sides, but for the best aesthetic, you're going to want to leave a, a minor gap or medium sized gap on both sides and then hit the return key. We're going to put two effects on Exton on the uh, sides. If you look at my example, see it has a, uh, this, I have to zoom in for, you'll see a gray right there and then the yellow. We'll get to the orange shadow in just a second. So with the uh, Exton layer selected or the text layer selected, at the bottom of the layer window, you'll find FX. Click on that and the option that you're looking for is stroke. Under stroke, here are your settings, size, 10 pixels. Position, outside, blend mode, normal, opacity, 100. Double click where you see color right here, and you're gonna wanna make it a medium gray no matter what. In this, in this next version, you'll be able to do whatever you want, I promise, but trust me on this one, you're gonna want a medium of the road gray. Next to stroke, over on the left side in all the different style options, you will find a plus sign. Every time you hit this, it'll make another stroke option. As you can see, I already have two, so I don't want to hit it, but you go ahead and hit it so that you have a second stroke, not a heart attack. Go ahead and now click on that second stroke, and you should see it pop up. Here are your settings for the second stroke. 20 pixels for the size. Position outside, blend mode normal, opacity 100. Double click on the color right here, so the color picker comes up, and you can choose anything you want. For this sake, I guess, I will change my color so that I have two different extens and I'm gonna go a green this time. I would not make your color super dark because we do uh, get to a spot pretty soon where you make like a shadow version. So leave room for a darker variant or a darker color. So if you're going green and you like a nice forest green like this, just keep in mind that the next part will be darker. So I'll go about here and I'll hit okay. And then I'm gonna hit okay up here. We can close out of that. So you should be looking at something like this. We don't want this to be a text layer anymore. So on the Exton text layer, click down with two fingers at the same time, and you're gonna have to scroll down for this one. The one that you're looking for is rasterize layer style. So go ahead and click that. And when you do, you'll see that the whole text effect and the fact that it's a text layer, all of it is gone, all right? I wanna duplicate this layer, I wanna copy easiest way to copy a layer is hold command and press the letter J and now you'll see I have Exton copy on Exton copy I'm gonna double click to change the name of it I'm actually actually gonna call it Exton shadow I can take my caps lock off now and I'm gonna click and drag it below Exton so there's Exton on top Exton shadow on the bottom I'm gonna eyeball out Exton I know it doesn't really change any effect but I really just want to see shadow at the moment all right with Exton Shadow, I'm going to hold Command and I'm going to click on the little thumbnail icon where you see my cursor right here and I'm going to click on it while Command is held down. 
that will select the entire layer, well, the contents of that layer. So Exton is selected right now. I'm going to take the paintbrush tool or the brush tool over here. You can hit B on your keyboard for that. Let's go up to the top and I want to change a couple settings right here. You'll see a small little number and the drop down arrow. If you find the general brushes folder, let me close my other ones. My general brushes folder, everybody will have that. You're looking for the brush called hard round and the size you want to make enormous, like 500 plus pixels, okay? You could even slide it all the way over, but 500-ish will do for this. So it looks like I'm gonna go 1,000. Click somewhere on the top just to get rid of it. Now in the bottom left corner, this is where you can choose your color. Right now I have it to black. I'm gonna double click, and I have that green for the main color right here. I'm gonna go for a darker shade of green for this. This will eventually be the like shadow color of uh, your text. I'm gonna hit okay. You can stay in the same color family or you could do something different. Now with the, your huge paintbrush tool, click and draw or drag so that the whole thing changes to that, just that color. I'm now gonna hold down command on the keyboard and hit D to deselect and it looks like everything should go. I'm gonna take the move tool now. Before I move this, let's eyeball back in our normal extant so that we can't really see this. With, um, Exton shadow layer selected, drag it down a little bit, and then drag it over to the right a little bit. Position it somewhere where you think looks nice. I like that right about there, that looks good. I'm gonna hop back up to the Exton layer, the proper one for this next step. This is a little bit more detailed if you're struggling with this. I don't think you have to do this to make it look good, but it sure does. Tool that you're looking for is called eyedropper. Just hit I on your keyboard and uh, that'll select it. You do have to massively zoom in for this, and I'm gonna start over here and I'll show you why I like this, or li I recommend doing this but not required. You're gonna wanna eyedropper the color that you originally selected, so the not the gray, but the other one, the lighter of the colors. Just simply click on it and it will select it. Hit B to switch back to your paintbrush tool or go manually click on it. Up here where the size of the brush tool is, change it to 10px and then hit the return key. That way it's a nice size. I'm gonna start by clicking right here where the E and the X are kind of divided. I'm gonna hold the shift key, this is really important, and I'm gonna click again towards the bottom. It'll kind of like divide the E and the X. This is a tricky one, you kind of have to lace the shot over here. I won't hold shift again right away, don't hold shift. Start your click, then hold shift, click a second time, and it'll make a straight line. So don't hold shift, start, hold shift, click. And you can do this if you so want. If you're struggling, just command Z and kind of let this one go for now. Um, again, not a requirement by any means. Uh, in fact, even on that one, I don't like it, so I'm not gonna do it. But I do kind of like it on these other ones, just kind of like placing it. Um, command Z is a good undo you're not super jazzed about the line that you just made but it does divide lines nicely I think letters like O I just leave alone because they they're more curved uh, that I'll leave alone and that I'll leave alone since they're curved but I do think that gives it a nice look and especially when two letters are touching it divides them nicely all right time to pop in all of these photos a tool that you want to look for it might be hidden you kind of actually have to click with two fingers Originally, this tool here will be shown, Object Selection. Click with two fingers on that, and you're looking for Magic Wand right here. With Magic Wand selected, the top of your screen changes. Make sure that a couple settings are the same as mine. Sample size should be point sample. Tolerance, let's take that all the way down to 10. Anti-aliasis should not be checked. Contiguous should, and sample all layers should not be checked, okay? You're going to want to make sure that the extant layer is selected and you're going to need to constantly go back to this layer for what we're about to do. Let's select the E layer. Let me zoom in. Click on the black part of the E and you'll notice that just that selects, okay? Oh, I made a huge mistake. Hopefully we'll go back to it. Let me kind of hop in this video here real quick. When you're typing, hopefully you typed all your text in black. I guess I didn't specify that. If you didn't, you'll have to go back. Uh-oh, 
hopefully your text is a distinct color. Uh, how the magic wand works is wherever you click, it just picks up that color right there, okay? So just make sure that your uh, text is black. All right, um, in addition to that, well, let's go pop in our photo. Go uh, click on your finder right down here, and hopefully you can go back to your downloads. You can look at these. Choose any one that you want. I'll just start with this one to make it different. Two finger click on it and find the copy option. Go back into Photoshop and with the E selected, ready, edit, don't do paste, do paste special. And under paste special, you're gonna find paste into. And there it goes. Now you can take the move tool, this top left tool right here, and you can move this around and you know try to make it look as nice as possible. I'll leave it right about there. Hit enter when you're done. Where it says layer one over here, let's double click on that and we'll just call it E because it's in the letter E. Reselect the extant layer. Go back up here to your magic wand or hit W for magic wand and click on the X. And you're gonna rinse repeat here. Go back to your finder, pick a different photo. In this case here, I'll go with the, we'll do movie tavern. And I'll hit copy, go back into Photoshop. And again, it's edit, paste special, paste into. There it is. I can take the move tool or V for move tool, kind of move it around, make it, oh, I might have to stretch this out because there was a little bit of an empty spot down there and hit enter. Go uh, layer one now, double tap on it, rename that T, go back to Exton, magic wand, click on the T, back to finder, pick a different photo. Let's use the cyclists for this one for the Schuylkill Valley Trail. Copy, go here, edit, paste special, paste into. This one needs some major stretching. Certain letters you'll find that you're out that kind of do that. And uh, there is a second cyclist here. Let's see if I can get both. I might just get one. Yeah, that looks fine. Rename layer one once again to the correct letter. Go back to the extant layer. Uh, w for magic wand, click on the O, finder. Um, I will take the uh, Valley Forge Park one here, copy, even though that's not really in Exton. Edit, paste special, paste into. Uh, might have to stretch it out a little bit and we'll move that monument over. It's a nice looking photo. Rename that to the correct letter, in this case O, and very lastly, Select the magic wand to grab the uh, N. Go into Finder. Uh, I will take the Marsh Creek one. Let's copy. Edit, paste special, paste into. Boom. Oh, looks like I'll have to take the move tool to stretch that guy out a little bit. And there we go. Move it over a little bit. Show some of these people actually in the lake there. All right. Um, oh, rename that layer. Cool, now comes the easy part here is the background. You're gonna to wanna to select the layer postcard texture right here. And with that layer selected, let's hop back into Finder, take the one photo you didn't use and hit copy on, or two finger click and copy. Go to edit paste or command V, it should be at the back. You're gonna make this a little bit, oh, you know what, not a little bit bigger. You need to make this big so that it fills the entire page for right now, which does ruin the postcard, but you'll see where I'm getting, okay? Where it says layer one right here, let's name that background, and then hit return. Uh, look right here where it says normal. This is the layer mode. If you click on the drop down arrow, you're gonna see a whole bunch of ones pop up. In my opinion, linear burn is the best for this. So you can look at other ones if you want to, but trust me on linear burn. We want to uh, come up with a style where the sides kind of fade in. And how to do this, you need to make this layer mask right here. So with the background layer selected, click on layer mask. And it doesn't look like anything happens, but you'll notice that you have this little icon selected now. I need you guys to find and select the gradient tool. You could hit G on the keyboard. It might be under your paint bucket, but take a look, it is right here. With the gradient tool selected, by default, your gradient might be a black and white gradient up here like this, where I have this color. Click on this drop down arrow and find the basics folder. Under basics, hopefully you can find a gradient that is black to checkerboard, which means black to transparent. Go ahead and double click on that to select it, and then watch what you can do. 
I can click and drag and select or, or swipe from the outer side into the photo and it blends in that direction. Now I'm gonna hop to the bottom and I'm gonna click and drag, oh sh uh, It kind of made these two dots. If you're on the newer version of Photoshop, it does a weird thing with these dots. Let me try to show you. You might have to move these dots around and click and drag. If you're on the older version or if you're not on this weird new thing of gradient, um, you don't have to mess with these and you can more simply click and drag. So after I made that one, I'll just maybe click once to like let go of that and then I'll click and drag over here. Yep. So this might take a little bit of fooling around with, but really what you want to do, your goal here is to click and swipe down so that the uh, photo blends a little bit more nicer into the postcard. The last little bit that you might want to mess around with is over here, see how I still have the layer mask selected? Re-click on the icon that has the actual photo itself, and then you'll see opacity at 100%. You might like turning that down. Don't turn it down super far, but maybe something around like 75. That way you see the postcard texture a bit. And speaking of postcard texture, we actually want to duplicate that layer. So select postcard texture, hold command, and hit J, and you'll see that that made a copy. Move the copy layer by clicking and dragging all the way to the very top of Photoshop. In here, where it says layer mode normal, check them all out once again. But again, I, I really think Linear Burn does the best job here. Now, you, there's no need to apply this everywhere to the photo. We really just want this on Exton. So let me show you a cool little trick here. On uh, the Exton layer right here, hold Command and click on the little thumbnail of your Exton layer. See how once again it selects right there? Also, let's see if this works. No, it doesn't. Okay, we'll just apply it to there. It'll look nicer like this anyway. With that applied, go back to Postcard Texture Copy and then hit the Layer Mask button. And now it's just on Exton. So if I zoom in, it'll have like a little bit of that Postcard Texture on Exton. Cool. All right, um, two more things to do installing font because we have to write that greetings from business. So we're gonna take the uh, type tool over here, the T, and where it says Helvetica Nue up here. Oh no, we can't type with it yet. We gotta install, what am I doing? Well, no, no waste. You'll need that tool in just a moment anyway. Go back to your finder, go back to the downloads, and where it says Cunningham Singleton, double click on it. Should automatically open up in a uh, application called Fontbook if you're on a map, a Mac. <laughs> I already have this font, so I'm not gonna do this, but right here where it says replace for me, you'll see that it says install. Go ahead and click install to install it. Don't mind me clicking the red dot. Then if you go over here to my fonts, it'll show every font that you've downloaded onto your Mac. I'll show you right here to prove it. I do have it, Cunningham Singleton right there. So now you have it. You can hit the red dot to close out of the font book and we don't need downloads anymore. So you can close out of that as well. Go back, click somewhere in Photoshop to have it. So now where we had Helvetica Nue, you can highlight that, deselect it or delete it, and type in C-U-N, there it is, Cunningham Singleton. Um, you could, it doesn't matter, honestly, if you have the regular or italicized, they're both actually kind of the same. The one thing that you do want to change here is your font color. For whatever reason, mine is gray right now. I recommend making it a solid black and then hit OK. This is where you change the font color. Should have specified that earlier. 72 is gonna to be too big for what we're about to do. I think go ahead and make that 30 or 24. Let's go 24. Then click somewhere to type. Welcome, or no. You could either do welcome to or greetings from. I find greetings from a little bit more fancy. Afterwards, before you take the move tool, let's go over here to this little button right here, that curved T, click on that. Style, change that from none to rise. And once again, I recommend a 30% so it's not super dramatic. Hit OK. Then you can take the Move tool and move Greetings From into a nice position like that. Rather than having it be at 100% opacity right over here where it says Greetings From layer, I'm going to turn the opacity down. Um, no number is right because it's really going to change depending on your background photo. You want it to stand out, but you don't want it to be obnoxious. 71 looks pretty good for me on this one. And then we can go ahead and call that a day with greetings from. 
Now, down at the bottom, normally you would have a slogan. Like if you were to do Philadelphia, you could say the city of brotherly love. If you were to do New York, you could say the Big Apple. I'm just going to type example <laughs> slogan because Exton, to my knowledge, does not have one. You're also going to want to click the curved T, change the style to rise, and change the percent to 30, and then hit OK. Taking the move tool, I will move my example slogan into this corner right pocket, and I'll change its opacity to something that looks nicer, like 75 for that. All right, we are almost done. This next little effect is the last thing I like to do. Go to your Exton shadow layer, and then go to FX right here where we did stroke earlier. Scroll down and you will find drop shadow. Let me read over the settings that I think look really good for drop shadow. Blending normal, opacity 100, angle 90. These three you might want to change. I had the distance at 16, the spread at 11, and the size at 40. Don't change this, the qu uh, quality. I just like leaving it right there. You can tweak these numbers to whatever you like better if you want, but that's what I used. Then hit OK. Boom. What that does, let me just show you without, with, just kind of enhances that shadow effect a little bit more on it. All right, there it is. There's our retro postcard. Only thing you would change is the photos on the inside, the color on the text, the name of the place to whatever you want, and obviously the slogan. Hopefully you find a city that actually has a real slogan or something like that. All right, um, you would want to save this to, uh, to both the cloud and upload it to Schoology, and you're good to go. Congrats.